and welcome back. So in the last step, we got our project set up for this shader doodle application we're going to make. We also got a bunch of front end tooling set up. It was a bit more than we, we tried in the last uh, episode, but we added TypeScript and some web dev server niceties. And um, I'll get to that in a little bit, but it just occurred to me, I got so caught up with our front end tooling setup that I forgot to show you the application we're going to make. So here it is. Uh, this is our shader doodle application. We're going to actually record GIFs with this thing. Um, it seems like, you know, not the most useful thing to do in the world. I, I think some of the use cases of Shader Doodle you see out in the wild uh, are going to be way more cool than this. But this is, this is a, you know, there's a lot of working pieces of this application. So it's a good example of what we can build. What GIF would be complete if it didn't have, you know, some text overlaid on top of it? Uh, and we can edit this, we can change the color of that text, uh, but more importantly, we can switch up our shaders with Shader Doodle, so we can do, um, maybe a spiky purple alien blob here. Uh, so once we load this, once we load this shader, we can see it here, uh, and we can, you know, edit the text if we want. Um, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change some values at random here, the violet color, I guess, so... Let's change that to 0.9, and then I'm going to reload my shader. And yeah, the, the color changed a little bit. Um, I'm, it's kind of dangerous to do too much um, and, and have it break on us. We can maybe have some, uh, you know, a texture that gets loaded, but it's all wavy underneath. Um, it's changing this on the fly. And, and again, we can change, uh, let's, let's change one of these values here and make it, make something happen to it. Uh, so we'll reload there. And yeah, it's... It's a little less wavy now. Um, and ultimately, like I said, what we want to do here is record a GIF. Or is it GIF? I, I say GIF. I don't, I don't know about you all. Uh, but so we can, we can set the number of frames it records. We're going to have 10 frames to our GIF here. We're going to let it control the milliseconds between frames. And so I'm going to drop this down to maybe 250. Uh, and then we can just record our GIF here. So let's try that. So you can see it recording um, frame by frame. And here's our GIF, it just pops open um, in another tab and, and we can save it if we like. But here's the thing, where are we now? We have none of that yet. We have our front end tooling set up. We have a red page, a completely red page. So as you can tell, we have none of that UI in here yet, uh, but we do have some front end tooling. So we have, uh, we have a TypeScript file. It generates us a, a JavaScript file and a uh, JavaScript map file. And, Map files, if you're, if you're not familiar with them, um, they're, they're useful when you're previewing your project in the browser and something goes wrong, you see an error or something. Uh, it, it won't show you the error in this file, in the generated JavaScript, the transpiled JavaScript. It will show you the error as it pertains to your TypeScript file, your original file. So map files are helpful, so I'm glad we have those in. But in addition, we're actually pretending we're importing real CSS here. And when I say pretend, I, I do mean, so this is a real CSS file that we're using. But when we, when we do import it, we're not actually importing the straight CSS here. We're going through our web dev server uh, rollup plugin lit CSS. Uh, so this is a plugin that, you know, takes a CSS file, it wraps it with some lit goodness, such that it can be imported as a CSS file uh, directly right here, or we can pretend to import it here. What actually gets imported is a JavaScript file with that lit wrapper around it, so it can uh, be used in lit. Now, importing CSS like this is actually coming, hopefully. It's, it's in Chrome right now, hopefully the other browsers will pick it up, but it's a good way to work, so it's kind of it's kind of a workaround, or it's almost like a polyfill, but not really a polyfill to get this the, get this working with Web Dev Server. Again, though, blank red page. Let's let's fill this out a little bit. Let's actually start making our app. So in this step, we're going to uh, build out our UI. We're not going to make it functional quite yet. We're just going to build out the visuals, uh, so we have something to work with. So of course, the very first thing I want to do is I want to install some Spectrum Web Components. We're still going to be using that in uh, this project. So let's get those installed right now. Now I'm going to import all the Spectrum Web Components I need all at once, just so we can have them here at the get-go. We're going to obviously have a theme. We're going to switch to a dark theme for this round. Um, it looked, it looked kind of nice, so uh, I, I'm excited to use this dark theme. Uh, we're using another picker or a combo box or a drop-down menu. 
menu items within that picker, uh, a spectrum button. We're actually gonna check out accordions today and see what those look like. Uh, field labels, those are the labels that just um, you know, are associated with any uh, input fields you have uh, just to label them with text. A divider, a, it's a visual separator, um, a switch, a toggle switch, uh, sliders, and color areas and color sliders. So those are the elements we're going to use today. So as the very first thing I want to render today, let's start out with an SP theme tag. Close that up. Uh, we do need to style this as well. Instead of this host selector, let's just style our SP theme tag. Now we're gonna divide this application up into a couple different columns here. So let's add this first column. And so this is gonna be the this is gonna be the left column, uh, the left half of our page. We're gonna have this container called Canvas. And this is gonna be a placeholder for the shader doodle component until we actually build it in. We're gonna give it a linear gradient, so it kind of looks like a place where the shader doodle should be. Um, here it is without style so far, but here's our editable text we want to have, and it's over our shader doodle container. Obviously, we're going to need style here to build this stuff out, and this will change the color of this editable text we have right here, uh, overlaid over our shader doodle component. Um, and then, of course, we have the slider to control the number of frames we have, uh, and the milliseconds between frames. So, already we have some components on the page, so let's, let's keep going. And now I'm going to add the right-hand side, the right column of our page here, uh, of, again, without style yet. And so we do have a few pickers or combo boxes uh, with field labels. So we want to show what, what shaders are we going to have available to us, and we can select them. Um, same with textures. If we're using a texture, we want to be able to select a texture uh, from a menu to use as our background. And here we have this accordion. And our accordion is going to have our text editor, uh, our lit element based text editors inside. These, these, this text editor component we're gonna use is called lit code. Um, so it's made especially for lit. Uh, not that it should matter since it's a web component after all, but I had confidence that I know it's gonna work because we're using the same tech. Um, anyway, so, these accordions are going to hold those, the, the fragment shader code editor and the vertex shader code editor. And then we're going to have a button at the bottom for reloading the shader. And of course, we're wrapping all this stuff in div containers so we have something not only to latch onto when we're applying the CSS, but just so we can group these things properly. So yeah, we can, you, can start seeing these, uh, you can start seeing these columns here, the two sides of our application, even though we have no style yet. So as we scroll through this, long code, uh, you can probably see for yourself that it really needs to be organized better. It needs to be split up into several components, honestly, rather than have it be, you know, one big application with one component. And of course, that's what we should do, but I don't want to waste time right now focusing on application organization, component organization, when we already covered that in the last episode. So right now, our markup's going to be long, uh, maybe a little confusing, and so is our CSS. But Again, want, I want to focus on other things today. So yeah, maybe after we finish up this application, you could try your hand at organizing some of this yourself. Uh, it might be a good exercise. So the first thing I think we should do for style here is address our columns, our left and right columns. Um, they're both going to be flexbox containers. Um, they're going to they're gonna flow uh, top to bottom, and uh, their height is going to be 100% of the page minus 40 pixels because those 40 pixels are 20 times two on the padding. Um, and then each side is gonna be 50% as well. Um, and on the left side, we're gonna have a background color that's a slightly different gray than the right-hand color, just so we can you know, differentiate those two sides visually. Um, and those, those colors are being pulled from CSS vars that are part of the Spectrum Web Components package. Um, and uh, the right side, of course, it's going to scroll if we needed to because you know, these, these fragment and vertex shaders, they could be super long and we might need that side to scroll. So already we start seeing some good things here, right? Uh, it's starting to look already like the application we need it to be. But there's a lot more CSS we can add. Now, of course, since Shader Doodle is the main focus of this application, we can at least get our Shader Doodle uh, placeholder looking correct with this, with this canvas styling. So it's going to have a width of 100% of that, you know, left side of the uh, application we want. And so we're going to give it a height, uh, a margin, um, and we're going to set some font size, weight, and family for that editable text inside there. So let's try that. 
And of course, anything inside that canvas, which is this wildcard selector here, we're gonna give it a position of absolute uh, and a height and width of 100%. And this is just so these layers can stack on top of each other. But we really only have, you know, the shader doodle layer and the text layer. So yeah, this is, this is pretty much looking like the correct size that I want this to be. Um, so let's continue on adding CSS here. So the, as, as the next thing we want to do, I want to take these, take these drop downs and switches and lay them out across uh, instead of up and down. And we're also going to build out kind of a, a container, a visual container for all of this stuff with the, the reload my shader button. Uh, you'll see what I mean when I add this. Um, so let's do that. So we have a shader control header div here, and we're giving that a flex direction of row, so it goes left to right. Um, and then uh, our footer, we're gonna give it a different background color, a slightly different gray again, um, and some padding and some uh, left and right radius, some border radius. Um, and we're gonna make a display of flex, and we're gonna align these things on the, uh, the flex end. So let's save this. And so here's what I mean. We're making these combo boxes go across instead of up and down. And then we're making a container uh, for our button right here with some slight, uh, you know, rounded borders. Um, so this is, this is starting to look good. And now that it's laid out properly, I'm seeing that we haven't talked about what this shader toy style switch uh, is supposed to do. We'll get there. Uh, it is pretty cool. It enables a lot, uh, but we'll get there. But in the meantime, things are looking pretty good so far. I want to be able to tweak visually what's going on down here with these sliders in this area. So if we go back to our Doodle TS file, we can see that that uh, recording area has an ID of record settings. And so let's add some CSS to help us out there. And of course, it's going to be real simple. We're going to set up this as a Flexbox, which no surprise, I love Flexboxes. Um, uh, and then every element inside record settings is going to have a margin top of 15 and a flex of one, which means um, it's going to be evenly spaced, these items inside the, the record settings flex box. So let's save that. So we're splitting things up into two different columns here. Uh, you know, things are a little more spaced out, a little more readable. So this is, this is looking pretty good. Now there's one last thing I want to do with style, and you can already see things are, I mean, these are web components. These are Spectrum web components, so there's already logic built in, even though we haven't, we haven't written JavaScript yet ourselves here, but our accordions are already working. Um, if, if we had menu items here, they would be popping down, but the, the switch works as well. The only last thing I don't like visually here is there's really not enough room uh, visually for this divider line. It needs to it needs to have some padding right here. And there's some other tweaks for these Spectrum web components on this page as well. So let's add this final bit of CSS. Um, the Spectrum buttons will have a width of 200 pixels just so they're consistent, uh, a height of 50 pixels again for consistency, um, and a margin left of auto. Uh, the divider is going to have a top and bottom margin just so it can space itself out better and provide some separation um, better. Uh, and then the accordion is going to have a background color. Um, it's going to have some padding around it. Um, and then the color area is going to have a margin right of 50. And here it is now. I mean, it's subtle, but these visual tweaks make it look a little bit better. I mean, overall, I think it's looking a lot. These elements have some breathing room now, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now, with all that in there, I think this is a good place to wrap up this step. Um, there will be some more visual changes, but it's going to be, they're going to come as we add in features um, and wire things up, which will come in the next few steps. Now, I did throw in my HTML and CSS pretty fast in this step, um, uh, in large blocks at a time. Um, that's because I didn't want to focus too much on the HTML and CSS we're adding specifically here, because it's just normal HTML and CSS. So if those are details you want to get into, you know, please refer back to uh, the GitHub repo for this project, but um, there, there are loftier goals here that I want to cover. And now that we've got the visual uh, design of this application built and, and filled in right now, we can focus on those in the next step. So stay tuned. <laughs>